Is your mind an absolute mess? Is it just chattering a mile a minute? Can you not get a moment's peace? Well, you're in luck because today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to declutter your mind. This is the Existential Stoic Podcast. My name is Randy. That's Danny. What's up, Danny? What's up, Randy? Yeah, so uh, is your mind cluttered? I mean, you know, a lot of times I feel like there's this guy that just won't shut the fuck up <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> talking to me in my mind. So, yeah, I think a little bit sometimes. You know, it yeah, depends. Like, it goes back and forth. But, yeah, I do feel like I do feel cluttered sometimes. And I feel like the more stressed, anxious, you know, worried, depressed I am, the more cluttered it gets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just like we all want peace of mind and sometimes it can be so far away. But hopefully by the end of this episode, everybody will have a little peace of mind. So today's episode, we're just going to share three quick tips for how to declutter your mind. I'll go first. Uh, This is something that I heard the past couple of weeks ago. It said, bring your mind where your hands are. And this is pretty interesting because oftentimes when your mind cluttered, when you're thinking about a whole bunch of stuff, it's not actually stuff in the present where your hands are. (laughs) If you bring your mind where your hands are, then you're more likely to be able to focus on what you're actually doing and the clutter will still be there, but it won't be as uh, important. I really like that one too, because that's a, that's a good way to think about it. Like you are in the present, but often your brain is not. Your conscious self is way in the past or pretending about imagining some make-believe future that it can't, it can't get right, you know, and it's trying to predict every possible outcome. It's like, we are problem solvers, but we also create problems. So I think that's a really good one. Being in the present is like key to this, right? To decluttering. It's learning yeah, how to just talking, be. <laughs> talking about problem solvers. I was, I had this epiphany this week where I'm pretty sure that like every problem that I've solved has been the, the start of a new problem. So I wouldn't. Ex- <laughs> yeah. We're just problem shifters. you know? <laughs> or yeah, problem shifters, problem creators. It's really all we yeah. do, right? Mm-hmm. It is. It's ridiculous. I, it goes really well with my uh, my first one, too, which is get what's on your mind in the world. Like, I think this is like, so talk to somebody. I think this is like a really big one, especially for me, too. I know, like, um, you know, a lot of times, I'm like, I can't stop thinking about something or there's like, all these things on my mind. A lot of it's just because I haven't actually said it. And like, you know, we talked about this in the past, like listening to others, talking to other people. Like a lot of times people just want to be heard. They just want validation. Right. And that's why, like, they don't need answers. They just want you to hear them because they're trying. They got to get this thing out of the brain, right, into reality. And it's like just saying it. A lot of times, you feel that weight come off. You realize, like, oh, it's not as big of a deal. And I think that is like crucial. For, you know, I think it's just get it out in the world. Be done with it. Yeah, and I would even say you don't even need to say it to someone else. Sometimes you can just say it, and <laughs> yeah. that's like the craziest thing. It'll just take care of it. Like if you're. If you have this feeling that's just like too strong or whatever, if you just name it, then all of a sudden it's gone. You named it and yeah, can move on. So my next one, similarly, is write it down. So this happens to me all the freaking time where I become completely overwhelmed and I'm just like, I I just like reach system shutdown because I'm trying to do way too many things at once, but I don't have them written down. They're all up here in my mind. And so to declutter my mind, I just write them down. And it's hilarious when I do this because each time the list is immense. And I look at it and I'm like, well, no wonder I'm completely fried. Like, that makes sense. (laughs) Yeah, it's just, that's funny. I was just looking at my, like, my running, like, to-do thing, which is just, like, a general thing that I want to get done. And I just was looking at this morning and I think it's at, like, it's at, like, 40-some-odd things. And, you know, it's funny because they all do generally get done. You know, they're like a lot of them are like longer term stuff like that. But, yeah, you got to write it down because if you don't like one, you can't. I've noticed like myself, like, I have a good memory. I have a good I'm very good at remembering things. But up to a point, I mean, everybody's got this right up to a point. It's just too much. Things start slipping and it just it's just too much that your brain is trying to constantly kind of like keep a handle on. You know, it's, it's way too much to focus on. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. I think writing down is awesome. My next one, I think, that goes with these is slow down. Uh, you know, I think we're all in a rush. We're all in a rush to get to the next place, to get to the next thing, to be happy, to do something. And I think slowing down is key to decluttering. Dude. Okay. So I just heard this saying today. Time takes time. time and it, doesn't takes sound, time. It, doesn't, it doesn't sound so deep. <laughs> 
But like we all want to achieve these things yeah. that, that require time. But we want to do it immediately. I mean, look at all look at all the books that are like do this in 24 hours, four hour of this, you know, all the all these things. We're looking for all these like hacks so we could do whatever in a shorter amount of time. And it's like time takes time. But that's like yeah. the thing we're least willing to actually give it is a little bit of time. It takes time, right? Everything does, but we expect to be masters immediately, right? We expect to be done immediately. It's like it all takes however long it's gonna take. And you got to slow down sometimes and just let yourself give yourself the time, basically, right? <laughs> to get to wherever you're going or whatever you're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my last one is my solution for pretty much every quick fix we have. Yes, Wim it Hof is. Meditation. <laughs> knew it was coming up, though. <laughs> hey, it Dude, I can't. If it worked I that can't. well for you as a, as a cure-all, snake oil or whatever. Everything. You know, and you just say it. <laughs> Everything. It's, cra it's crazy how much it does. Because, like. It is something where it takes at least, okay, it takes my mind to a whole different place. And my mind will be going a mile an hour or I don't know, 100 miles an hour. <laughs> and then I do it afterwards hour. and it's going a lot slower. <laughs> but it, and plus, I mean, there's a whole bunch of other benefits. Like, like when I've actually done it in, in classes and situ like group situations, dude, it takes you to a whole nother oh. level. It's like, crazy but even just doing it on a regular basis by myself it just it, it clears my mind it resets my mind and it just gets me ready to take on whatever is going on yeah but i think i think it's great you mentioned every time because one like you found something that clearly works for you and anything like that is good you know and that's the hard part though i think a lot of people struggle with that with meditation in general which is like there's a lot of different ways to meditate. People always think there's like one way or it's like one type. But if you look, there's tons of different practices, tons of different methods. Some people like to do it when they're doing like yoga and stuff. Like they really appreciate that combination of body and breathing and stuff. And like some people like doing a walking, lying down. You know, I mean, there's so many different ways. And it's like finding the right one and finding the right style can be like, you know, just an epiphany and like life changing as it has, obviously has been. So I think that's, yeah, a great one. Mm -hmm. And the benefits of meditation have been documented, I think, for thousands of years. <laughs> it's valuable, right? Mindfulness. Mm -hmm. um, that goes really well with my last one, too, which is just, like, breathe and meditate. Sit down. Give yourself a chance to, like, center. Because I think this is what people forget, too. Like, when you think of meditation, we always think of, like, the monks, like, up in the up in the hills and stuff and doing their thing and all. But, like, I know this myself in everyday life. It, it's such a great way to just let things go. To let your brain just stop for a minute doing what it normally does, which is attaching to all these thoughts and playing them out and imagining and doing all this crap. And instead, just not doing that <laughs> for a little bit. And it's like the benefits are just amazing. So I think, yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, that's a great one. So there you have it in a nutshell, how to declutter your mind. Six quick tips for getting all that junk out of your mind so you can feel better or just feel however you are. This is the Existential Stoic Podcast. Make sure to check us out on YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. Join us twice a week. I'm Randy. That's Danny. I'll see you later, Danny. Later, Randy.